Welcome everyone to high school football playoffs here in Cuyahoga Heights. This is CBC TV Game of the Week Playoff Edition presented by the Ohio Center for Oral, Facial, and Implant Surgery. I am Kevin Earl. I am joined by AA Anthony Alford. AA, so great to be back with you and to start the the second season, the playoff season here tonight. Yeah, it is the second season, and we are locked in and ready to go, and we're fortunate to have an all-CVC matchup here in this first round uh, with several CVC teams in the postseason. Uh, this is exciting, and we are about ready to go, and these kids, they're all ready to go as well. They are ready to go. We, are, we just went through the uh, anthem, uh, America the Beautiful, and, of course, the Cuyahoga Heights Red Wolves alma mater. And the Star Spangled Banner was beautifully sung here tonight. They get the starters announced. Cardinal coming out to our left. They are the visitors here tonight. They are the 11th seed in Division Six Region 21 playoff action opening round. And, of course, as you've seen over the last couple years, we are now up to 16 teams in each region making the playoffs instead of just eight. Once we got out of COVID times, that change was made. And as we said, Cardinal is the 11th seed, Cuyahoga Heights the sixth seed. Cardinal in the regular season went five and five while Cuyahoga Heights only lost twice, but one of those losses was to these Cardinal Huskies. 16 to 10 just two weeks ago. A team that prides themselves on defense only giving up double digit points twice and those are the only two games that they lost in the Red Wolves. Double A, we kind of talked about it in the pregame social media hit. Keys to the game tonight, we know Heights has been watching the film. Defense, defense, defense has been stretched, has been stressed all week long because that's been their identity. Well, yes, and, and that's what they're known for. And again, it's all about the, it's all about the start. It's all about who's going to have that hot start, who's going to be all locked in and ready to go early on. And the, the other big key when you get to week 11 is where we are now. Week 11 is more so about what are the mindset of the kids. Because you, know, you, you almost – you can never forecast what kids are thinking and how they're going to react to games like this, pressure situations like this. So that – just to get things going, the way the kids are going to react early on, the, the moment they face a little bit of adversity, how are they going to respond to that? Those things are huge when you talk about Week 11 football because that's the difference makers in winning and losing playoff football games. As Cardinal has taken the field, and they are all the way across from us, of course, both here at Cuyahoga Heights, both sets of fans in one set of stands. The other side is open, kind of overlooking I-77 as the sun ha has set just about. It's a nice uh, it's a beautiful sunset. Beautiful sunset <laughs> out straight across from us. We are up in the booth this time. Usually yeah. we are we are out out there amongst the crowd, but tonight we are up here in the booth as we await the arrival of the host, Cuyahoga Heights Red Wolves. And Double A, you were just talking about the the mindset of the kids. Any any change that the, the coaches had to make or, or extra message they had to send because when we were out there, it felt like we weren't in a playoff game. We were in an SAT testing room. Yeah. No no music, no no energy, just all about the players, their coaches getting ready for this matchup. Well, and, and you talk about that comparison with the how it feels like an exam and it's that pressure cook. They always say, you know, in situations like that, the more – you act like it's normal. You know, the more that you act, you, you do as business as normal, you're in good shape. Can I just say I like this sign right here? <laughs> this is cool. This is this is really cool. But it adds to the excitement. Mm -hmm. it, the more, again, that you could do your normal routine, the, your, you don't warm up any differently in week 11 that you did in week one and, and week five. And the more you do things on a normal standpoint, then – the game starts, the field's the same, everything's the same. You know, once the game gets underway. As Cuyahoga Heights runs out of their tunnel and they are off to our right, I'm sure the crowd noise is going to pick up as soon as they come through the tunnel made by the band. And you were just mentioning the banner there, kind of a Halloween theme. Here come the Red Wolves to get this game just about ready to go. 
As they rip part of the banner down, and I guess apropos there, Double A, the one word that's really left is fear. Yeah. On this <laughs> hollow weekend, hollow, Halloween weekend of sorts here in Northeast Ohio and around the corresponding areas. You could almost call it Hollow Weekends. I, I know that's that I, that I, belongs I, to another park, but the the mentality is still there. Yes, yes, the <laughs> mentality is definitely definitely still there, and this is going to be a roller coaster ride of emotions in itself here tonight in this game. Who is going to be able to manage those emotions, those highs, those lows in a playoff game? You already know you played a close game before. You have to expect it's going to be close. And talking with both coaches, especially uh, Cardinal on before the game started, they said even in some of their, their blowout losses or what the scoreline may look like, that does not really tell the story and how long they were in those games. So both of these teams are going to be ready to go. And, it again, who's going to be able to manage that storm of emotions better here this evening? Yeah, and, and that's what it's going to come down to. This, this is where you turn to your upper class when you turn to your leaders. You know, the guys that's been there, you know, been there and done that. You look at those guys and you say, okay, what is the mindset that they're taking? You know, what is the mindset that they're going? You know, you got the energy here. You see the band. They're on the track right now. It, it, you, you take that energy and you're like, okay, let's get after it. Let's go. And that's really what it's going to come down to, especially early in the football game. And, you know, both teams are going to want to run the football. They're going to want to play that, that control clock controlling style offense but really it is the the defense of Cuyahoga Heights that is going to try to make a statement after that last game you feel like that's where that's the first thing to really look for here this evening after after that game but Cardinal looks ready Cuyahoga Heights looks ready we're ready right here on CBC TV Kevin Arnold alongside double a Anthony Alpha we're just about set for kickoff we might get kick off just a minute or so before seven o'clock it doesn't matter when both teams are ready to go why make them wait any longer let's get to the action on the gridiron yeah that's and these teams are locked in and ready you do wonder okay the recency bias what what did they've learned from these last couple of weeks but the game that matters as far as win or go home is this one right here and both teams are locked in and ready to go and, of course, there was a game in between that in Week 10 for both of these schools. So using that, what happened in those games, I know Cardinal wants to put out a better showing as they were just on CBC TV last week in Berkshire's new home stadium this season. And they lost 50-20, to 20, so you know that they have a bad taste in their mouth. They want to get out. And Cuyahoga Heights has a bad taste from two weeks ago, but still riding that momentum of winning last week. It comes down to the first round of the Ohio High School Athletic Association State playoffs here in Division 6, Region 21. Ball is on the tee. Noah, Noah Wilson is about to kick off for Cuyahoga Heights. Two players back deep for Cardinal. Christian Cowell on the far side. Here on the near side, looking to see if he will turn his number to us. It looks like that is Josh Soltis, who you're going to hear a lot of on the offensive side and in this game for Cardinal. You're gonna hear the Sultis name a lot in Cardinal football. So just awaiting the referees ready for play signal. They have it. Special teams unit is ready and Noah Wilson is into the ball end over end, a short kick. It'll land about the 24 yard line. Josh Sultis picks it up across the 25 out to the 27 yard line. And that is where the Cardinal Husky offense will start, again, led by their running back, Josh Soltis, and their quarterback, Logan Strever, the junior for Cardinal. And the one thing you have to look out for, you know, if you're in a Chicago Heights defense, and we saw it last week with Cardinal, being able to run the football and stop and run, that's going to be huge. And we'll see how much the Huskies are able to establish the running game early on. First and 10, Cardinal at their own 27-yard line. Strever will be in the shotgun. Soltis on his left hip. He will get the handoff. 
Trying to push over the left side and gain a couple out to the 29. Gain a two, second and eight for Cardinal. And I'll tell you what, this is a game right here that could be set up here for Connors um, over for the Red Rules. You look at, okay, if you, you're facing a tailback that's elite, you got to attack right on the football and get right to him. And this could be a big game here for Connors. Connors coming in with 93 tackles on the year. And their stat book had 33 solo. But you know Cardinal has circled him offensively, trying to probably run away from him if he can. But Connors has been up to the task. Strever's got it on the fake handoff across the 35, pushing towards first down yardage. It looks like he just gets it to the 37 and a half yard line. A gain of eight on second and eight. Move the sticks and keep the drive alive. And I'll tell you what, Strever's an athlete. I mean, <laughs> he is an athlete. Just, again, just when he has the football in his hands, he can do whatever he wants, basically. So I do like the approach though defensively. When you do see that, though, all hats to the football. And the more you see that, the better this could be defensively. Stoppage in play as Francis Connors needing to – Get rid of something. Maybe the official saw something he was wearing he needed to get off or just whatever equipment he brought. Didn't need all of it here tonight. And that Red Bulls defense doesn't need much. They get the push on first and 10 and push the Huskies back two yards back to their own 36-yard line. A loss of two. It'll be second and 12 with 10.34 to go. No score in this playoff game and you gotta like it Novak there in that middle just reading the play using his athleticism and the thing that we mentioned when we was down the field the linemen you know they're they're big obviously but there's a lot of athleticism down there as well they can move quick with their hips Cardinal back in the shotgun two receivers to the far side one here near side closest to us Shriver looking to pass on the crossing route just behind his target had him open as the Red Bulls were playing behind, he was looking for Aiden Gallagher, one of his main targets this season. Cardinal doesn't throw it a lot, but when they do, just kind of heard it here up in the booth, double A, got to lead your receiver on that one with that open space to get some of that yardage back. And when Gallagher has that space, he could create a big play down the field there. So we're going to see what happens here on this third and long. Third down and 12 from their own 36-yard line. Shriver sends a man in motion, looks out to him, sets up the screen, balls popped up in the air and falls to the turf. It bounced off a couple players before falling harmlessly to the turf to the benefit of Cardinal. So a promising drive early stalls and they will be forced to punt over to the Red Wolves. And sometimes when you get screen plays like that, when he was like, okay, I see everything that I wanna see. I see pressure and you're gonna get that middle screen. You're gonna be good to go but you could also affect the play when it's a hard blitz on a screen play. I think that happened there, rush to pass. The snap goes through the legs. Kyle Sinclair back to punt. Now he's gonna have to try to escape and he will not. A snap that was just pushed across the turf, never got up to Kyle Sinclair to punt that football away and the Red Wolves will start offensively in great field position at the Husky 24-yard line. And we kind of saw a similar storyline for that exact play last week um, with Cardinal and, and, and Brookshire. Like, so special teams, and talking about nerves, you can never anticipate how kids will react in playoff situations. So out come the Red Wolves, led by Devin Dizik, their quarterback. Kusia goes in motion. Red Wolves looking to throw on first and 10. A rarity for them. And that one goes over the head of Jacob Stewart. So it'll be second and 10 now at the 24 yard line of Cardinal. And that's an interesting point. You know, just a little surprise, very surprising. Not a little surprising, very surprising. Opening up with a pass, keeping the defense honest, and even with an incomplete pass. Maybe you still accomplish what you wanted to, and now the defense is on alert. Back to the traditional power formation. Dizik under center. And he will pitch 
Out to the right side, looks like Stewart on it, across the 20, pushing close to the 15 yard line, just shy. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the 16 yard line. Gain of eight on the play, it'll bring up a third down and two, and he already a crucial third down here for both teams, especially Cardinal defensively. Yeah, and credit the Huskies defensively uh, with Soltis and Kyle there. Outside containment with the option play that that made things happen. We're going to see what happens here on a third down. 9.14 to go, no score. Kaga Heights third down and two. Dizek will keep it himself wide open. Found the hole and gets inside the 10. A first and goal Cardinal, or excuse me, Cuyahoga Heights at the Cardinal seven yard line. That's where this, this option offense, this rushing attack for Cuyahoga Heights can hit you from different spots. Yeah, and, and again, remember, just a few plays ago, they opened with a pass. So I, I think because of that, this, it might be throwing the defense off as far as assignments and looking to see, like, who do I have? But it's assignment football defensively. Andy Jacob Zach in the backfield. He'll get the handoff, and he will push his way into the end zone. Seven-yard touchdown run just like that. Red Wolves strike first. 8.38 to go, pending the extra point. It is 6 nothing, Cuyahoga Heights. And look, Cuyahoga Heights took advantage of the short field. <laughs> Special teams making a difference. It's, an it's a near impossible task defensively to make a stop if you have short field there. And Cuyahoga Heights always comes out into this formation here seeing if the defense will give them a look to go for two. They will shift their, their line into the center of the field. And Noah Wilson will come on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Devin Dizek. Snap back, ball down, kick up, kick on its way, and the kick is good. So 8.38, as we said, it is 7-0 Cuyahoga Heights looking to make that early statement, early momentum grab by the home side. Yeah, and again, the difference between this game here today and what happened two weeks ago. You know, two weeks ago, you, you know, getting that getting that late thing. Let's take a look here real quick at the touchdown. Just again, assignment football. And again, credit Cuyahoga Heights. Every play offensively, as you saw there on the replay, they run hard. You know, shoulders down and, and the linemen up front support that, you know, as well. It makes it tough. It makes it really tough to defend, especially when a possession starts in the red zone. Jacob Zach with his 11th touchdown of the season. First one of the 2022 playoffs came in with 115 carries, 497 yards. But making it count when it matters most, getting into the end zone when Cuyahoga Heights needs it. So now they will kick off once again with a seven to nothing lead. Soltis and Kyle back deep again for Cardinal. Wilson with the ball teed up at their own 40 yard line. Ball is in the air and away and back in the arms of Josh Soltis who drops it briefly, picks it back up across the 25. Pushes his way out to the 26-yard line. They'll mark him, his knee down at that 25-yard line. And that is where Cardinal will come back out for their second possession of the game. Cardinal, promising start to their drive, got a first down, and then just could not find the rhythm to keep it going. How do they stay in it? What is that message to the team right now? Because you, you know that... Regular season versus playoffs is totally different. When you go down 7 nothing in the regular season, you know you got plenty of more quarters to go. You got plenty of more games to go. Here, you go down, you can't come back. You don't have any more season. What is that message to the Cardinals? Well, the Huskies? message is just, just keep doing what you're doing and, and attack. Don't worry about doing anything extra. You know, do what you do and you'll be fine. Strever looking to pass. Fires down to, he was trying to go to Cal, and that one gets picked off. Picked off. On the play by Francis Connors, who runs it back to the 29-yard line. And again, two straight possessions inside the 30-yard line of Cardinal for Cuyahoga Heights. Defense, special teams stepping up. 
Just set up the offense in good field position. Yeah, just being alert there defensively, coming down with that interception. And we've seen it a few times here, a couple of tip balls. You know, the previous possession, the tip ball was incomplete. But this time, it's always dangerous. When that football hangs in the air, it's, it's pick day, basically, if, um, if you're the defense. Timeout. Red Wolves. A good time to remind you and thank our partners here this evening. That is the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. Their doctors, Keith Schneider, Don Lewis, Jill Weber, and Jacqueline Tomsick. They specialize in dental surgery, implants, corrective jaw, and facial surgery, along with trauma reconstruction. For all of those oral surgery needs, visit the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery website at www.ohsurgery.com. That is www.ohsurgery.com. Com. We thank them for all of their support of the CBC, these student athletes, and CBC TV, of course, being the title sponsor. If you are looking to, to sponsor, because guess what? CBC TV doesn't just cover high school football or the football playoffs. We'll cover all the sports in the fall. We'll have some of the all-star games coming up. I know next Sunday we will have the soccer all-star game for both the boys and the girls here in the CBC. And... We will also cover basketball and all the winter sports, spring sports as well. So you'll be hearing a lot about the Ohio Center for Oil Facial and Implant Surgery. But if you're looking to get involved and sponsor as well, head on over to ChagrinValleyConference.com for more details. So after the timeout come the Red Wolves, already leading 7-0 with 8.23 to go, a first and 10 at the Cardinal 29-yard line. Jacob Zach. Actually, Dizek keeps it. Good fake on the handoff to Jacob Zach. Dizek read it well, carried it over the tw uh, 25, gets inside of the 23-yard line. Good gain on first down. Yeah, you got to be smart to run this offense and run this offense efficiently because every play, every play, you are basically coaching on the field. You're looking at the defense and you're saying, okay, What's, what's available? What's available for me to go and take off? And, and you go from there, you live with that decision. Dizek under center, second down and four. Jacob Zach gets the handoff this time. Gets down to the 15 yard line. It'll be enough for a first down. So Red Wolves, after that opening surprise, maybe trying to catch the Red Wolves off kilter a little bit with that pass. They've gone back to their bread and butter Defense gets them the ball back, and now their running attack is full go. Yeah, and this is where right now, if you're the Huskies, you got to dig deep. I mean, the, your back's against the wall right now, literally. you got to dig deep and see if you can at least hold this Cuyahoga Heights offense to three. First down and ten. Dizek hands to Jacob Zach, pushing his way inside the ten-yard line. Another good gain on first down, down to the eight-yard line. And they're just churning out those five or six yard carries to start. I believe he got seven on that one, so it'll be a second down in three. When you can average about five to seven yards a carry, you're going to set yourself up for a lot of success and maybe set up for that pass over the top as we've kind of seen the Red Wolves lull people asleep in the past. Yeah, we're seeing a few substitutions here as well. So you're talking fresh bodies being asserted to this offense. The conditioning is part of this as well. Dizek with Jacob Zach behind him, offset from him. And Jacob Zach will get the carry, push him to the five-yard line, needed to get to the, looks like the six-yard line for a first down. And they will drop the sticks this time, be a first and goal at the Cardinal five-yard line. And this offense just doing what it needs to against this Cardinal defense. And they're trying right now, Kevin, to kind of see, okay, who's going to actually get the football and kind of go from there. Jacob Zach and Zolads in the backfield. Jacob Zach gets it, pushing towards the goal line. No signal down at the one-yard line. So second down and goal now. And a key stand for this Cardinal defense right on the doorstep. And right here on this second and second to go, Hey, it's just baby steps. See what happens here defensively. But right here, you're Cuyahoga Heights. The, the way you're operating this office is exactly what you want to do. And it's been help 
two, two drives so far with short field. And we're just kind of seeing a repeat of the same formation over and over again. Jacob Zek right behind Dizik, the quarterback. Zolads just offset to the right. Man in motion. Jacob Zek pushes his way and walks his way for six more. Cuyahoga Heights getting the rushing attack rolling. And it has them up two scores here in the first quarter. It's amazing. It's amazing what disciplined football can do. It's just, it's just unbelievable. It's just watching them work in operation. And we go back to the matchup a couple weeks ago. They wanted that hot start. They didn't get it two weeks ago. And you can't get any better start than this if you're Cuyahoga Heights. So Cuyahoga Heights, again, will shift out of their two-point try formation. And Noah Wilson will come back in to attempt his second extra point of the game. Ball down, kick up, and kick good. 14 to nothing, Cuyahoga Heights here at home in a Division VI Region 21 playoff opening round matchup. Andy Jacobsack, two touchdowns to start this one. And we'll get a replay here in just one second as... Look at the line. Just in unison. I mean, it's just, at this point, you know, whether you call them the Hogs or, you know, that's what we used to call them back in the day. I don't know if it's still, <laughs> I don't know if that's still the appropriate name. Uh, but by week 11, you know, the, the successful football teams, the offensive line almost moves in unison together. And it showed there on that last replay, they block the same, they move the same, the steps are the same. And it, it shows with the chemistry of, of this blocking. In our pregame walk around around the field during during warmups, you were the one first one to point it out. Just the just the size, the the athleticism of the offensive line for the Red Wolves. And when you're getting all five guys pushing theirs back into the end zone, when you're at the two yard line, they're pushing them back in the end zone. You're gonna have a lot of success in that run game. Yeah, and that's been happening. You know, to this point, again, it helps when you have short field, but that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do, and that's what makes an offense like this successful. So the Red Wolves will kick off again, and Cardinal will look to get that offense rolling. A different story to start this one than just two weeks ago. Cuyahoga Heights was only able to score one total touchdown in that game. Again, still issues on the kickoff. Catching the, catching the kick at least, but at least giving, giving Cardinal a little bit more breathing room after that. Sometimes with those, when you see in these kickoffs or these punts, maybe sometimes it's fumbled, but they're able to get back on it. Mm -hmm. Coverage kind of gets out of their lanes and puts Cardinal in a better position to start this drive at their own 35-yard line. First and 10, 520 to go, first quarter. And, Kevin, I'll tell you what, was kind of making these returns a little bit tricky just to catch. Wilson's putting a lot of air in these kicks. He's some good kicks uh, that he's putting in. Uh, but credit Doman for recovering and getting a good return out of it. They have the talent. Just get your head in the game, and you'll be in good shape to really make things happen if you're the Huskies. Logan Strieber, quarterback. Looking to pass, fumbled the football, gets out of there. Looking to pass still, and in and out of the defender's hands. Jacob Stewart running underneath of Christian Cowell, the wide receiver. Ball falls to the turf. It'll bring up a second and 10 for the Huskies. So I'll tell you what, a lot happened for a second and 10. <laughs> was a lot of action going on, you know, for the second and 10. Again, for Shriver, just getting that football back, making something out of nothing for that play. You know, if I'm the Huskies, I kind of look at that play, even though it didn't gain any yards, it could have been a lot worse. So they'll come back out, Strever in the shotgun. Josh Soltis on his right hip. This time Soltis will get it, and flags fly in from be just behind the play, so Soltis gaining one on second down and 10, but a hold on Cardinal will back him up 10 yards. And after that first first down, 
just no rhythm, no synergy right now for that Husky offense. Yeah, and that's what they're trying to find right now. You know, again, credit this defense. You know, they these guys fly. <laughs> these guys fly. They're getting to the football. They're doing the things that they need to do. And, again, one of these things that they trained from playing each other two weeks ago. And you notice Tennessee's, and, and you go from there. And you see that you see that attention to detail. We knew that the home side was was going to come out with a purpose, not letting a team come in basically second time in three weeks, taking one on their home field. You've seen that focus there. And now Cardinal coming out in a spread formation. Streaver all alone finds his man coming underneath. That is Soltis out near the 30 to the 29-yard line, gaining some of that penalty yardage back, but it'll be a third and really long again for Cardinal. That defense is flying around, and all we saw in preparations this week and all we heard about AA, defense, 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 always the message here for the Red Wolves. Yeah, and a challenge for any team that faces them every week. That's a challenge, and it's been that way the entire season. They've had four shutouts on the year, only allowing just under six points per game. And a false start will push the Cardinal Huskies back once again, touching, finishing up that point on this Heights defense, which I know we will talk about throughout the rest of the night as well, Double A. Again, four shutouts, only allowing six points. And we mentioned in our pregame hit and in, in here on the show already, on the, on the game broadcast already, only given up double-digit points twice this year. And they take pride of that. Strieber looking to pass the old roll to his right, and he will go down in the backfield. Angelo Rocco comes through to sack Logan Strieber and bring up a fourth down for the Huskies. Defense flying around for the Red Wolves. And credit Rocco the way that he was able to get off of the blocker, and he was patient with it. He was patient. He was like, okay, I'm going to read my keys, kind of see where to go from there. He fought off his guy, made the play, finished the play. And when you face a streamer, you have to finish the play, and he did that. He came in with five sacks on the season already. This time, Cardinal able to get the punt away, allowing the turf to do its job, and football roll. Finally, Cuyahoga Heights will start in their own territory. They will start at their own 45-yard line where Christian Cowell down the football for the Cardinal Special Teams unit. So a little bit longer of a drive for Heights to go on if they want to continue to put points on the board. Feels like a very crucial moment in this game. Still three minutes left in the first quarter. We've already said it each drive for Cardinals defense, but if there was a time to get a stop and stop early in this game to try to get some momentum back, it would be right here. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time they've started on their end of the field. Correct. <laughs> even, even though they're at the 45, as they just called a timeout, it's their first time starting on their half of the field. Heights takes their second timeout of the first half. And still in the first quarter, they only they will only have one left for the last 15 minutes of the first half. But it seems like maybe Al Martin, who's been here for a couple decades, over a couple decades now here at Cuyahoga Heights, just allowing his guys, knowing and reading his sideline, knowing when they need to take that breath, get back out there and continue to go back to work. And Kevin, that's a great point because sometimes – when you're leading, you could be so excited. <laughs> you're like, okay, we're, we're go, go, go. And you forget, hey, even though you're leading, you got to relax and do your assignments as well. And, you know, that's great coaching staff reminding his guys, hey, just because you're ahead, you still got to play fundamental football. Devin Dizek, the sophomore quarterback for Heights. He'll come out in the shotgun, empty formation, looking to throw, has a man, and again, Throws wide of his intended target. This time, Anthony Katuzis, the intended target around midfield, goes out of bounds. So second down and 10. So the second drive where we've seen Cuyahoga High start with a pass. You know, kind of tried to throw off defense. 
And look, both times, you know, they were incomplete passes. The trick, though, the dangerous plays is right here. It's the second down. And if you're the Huskies, you don't want to give up multiple yards, but it looks like they're back in pass formation. Back in pass formation again. Dizik gets the snap. He'll look to run. Over the midfield, spins his way a couple times and gets stopped just shy of the Cardinal 45-yard line. So it'll be a yard shy of a first down, third down and one. Still here in the first quarter as the Red Wolves lead 14-0, 2.50 to go in the first quarter. I'm watching him run the football, and I'm just thinking just in my head, okay, circle button, circle button, spin move, spin move. <laughs> that was nice. That was a beautiful run. And, again, just the skies. In pass formation that time, and it's like, oh, maybe try to go over the top again. Decided to run the football, and they gained nine out of that play. Dizek under under center this time on a third and short. He'll hand to Jacob Zach, and he pushes his way over the 45 to the 44-yard line, gain of two, but it'll be enough for another first down. So Heights keeps their drive rolling as the chains move on the other side of the field. Double A, you were just mentioning, you know, hitting that circle button, hitting that spin move. Whether in a video game or especially out there in the real real game, sometimes it might be a little bit too much, but Dizik has that, has that ability, has that speed to plant, spin, and continue his run. Took a, took a little lick there at the end of that play, but you wonder if, uh, you know, you want to get want to get your quarterback down. You want to go north and south. You don't want to mess around with that. As Heights doesn't mess around on first down, but they do have a penalty flag come in, and the offensive line moved. So false start, first and 15, back to midfield for Heights. And for those who are like, why did you mention the circle? But like, Xbox fans, don't worry, we'll get you in at some point as well. <laughs> We'll get, we'll get that. That's why Kevin is shaking his head right now next to me in the booth. We'll get that hey, I got PlayStation, so <laughs> I knew exactly what you were saying. I'll tell you what, though. that The last play, though, with the with the Huskies, it takes work. It takes work facing this offense, sustain with your assignments. That is really the only way you could defend this offense. Dizek looking to throw, sets up the screen. He's got it to Connors, over the 40, over the 35. Bullying his way down near the 30-yard line. And he'll be dropped just shy of it at the 31. But Connors comes up high stepping as caught that little screen pass and bullied his way down for another first down. And the block it was there in front as well. And it's just, this is, I'll tell you what, when you're facing off, it's so frustrating because <laughs> You feel like, okay, fine, you know what? I've worked all game long to get to the quarterback. Worked all game long. Finally going to get to the quarterback. Almost there. And, again, that's where the assignment football, being disciplined, resist the temptation. So first down and 10. The Cardinal 31, four heights. Dizik, option pitch out to Kusia. Trying to get around the edge. A great play on the far side. Not allowing him to turn up the sideline. That was Reese Soltis, the sophomore Soltis on the edge, making the tackle on Kusia, who we've seen many times on CBC TV, electric in the open field. Yeah, and good read by him as well out of that safety position, just coming out, and the containment is so important. And, you know, you start with small victories. You go from there. Remember this, though, and I know the court is about to wrap. Remember, you know, the initial drives, you had – they have short field. It's very hard to defend against short field off of turnovers. Here, Kyle High starts at their own 45-yard line. Yeah, they've gone off some successful big plays, but there's still more field to go. And if you're the Huskies, you start somewhere, and maybe that's the start that you want. Yeah, we, we've, seen, we've seen them make the first play. Can you make that next play? That'll be the, the key for Cardinal to Stay in this one and get back in it as well. Give their offense back out on the field to get back in it as they trail 14 to nothing here at Cuyahoga Heights as the Red Wolves taking advantage of two short fields in that first quarter. A uh, mishandle on the snap of a punt gave the Red Wolves their first short field and then Andy Jacobs that cashed in from uh, seven yards out and then on the very next play for Cardinal offensively, 
Logan Schrieber threw an interception. And at the end of the drive, Jacob Zach got his second of the game, that time from two yards out, to make it 14 to nothing. This is your CBC TV Game of the Week in Cuyahoga Heights, presented by the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. Kevin Arnold alongside AA Anthony Alford. I know I've said it many times in AA, but it is so good to be back here on CBC TV and be alongside you calling the game. Yeah, it's an electric feeling here. The football in this conference is unbelievable. And no matter where we go, no matter what game we're calling, the, the, the action, the strategy, the, the game planning, the, the talent is just incredible in this emerging huge conference here. Second down and 10 as we start the second quarter. Dizik looking to go deep. He's got a man open and just out of the reach of Nick Ambrust. On the far side of the end zone, they had the play they wanted. He got the step, just overshot it just a bit. And we've kind of seen Dizik maybe a little amped up for this playoff game here tonight. He's overthrown a couple of his receivers early in this one. Yeah, I, and you know what, though? It may be. Maybe a little bit of a reach out there. You could have a little something there. Uh, but a stop. Look, we haven't seen many of those. We haven't seen many, you know, no gains. So this could be the opening that Cardinal needs right here. Heights will stay in spread formation. Dizek gets the snap, looking to his left, and throwing out of bounds. Again, just not that connection on the Passing offense not there to early in this one, and that is where Cardinals kind of been able to disrupt and get some of these stops. And now it brings up a fourth down and 10 in plus territory at Cardinal 31. And good work there on the outside there by Dolman, you know, just on that coverage, you know, and, and you, they need to do something with that and go. But you're kind of in no man's land, so fourth down territory, here we go. Fourth down and 10, 11.50 to go, second quarter. Heights faced with their first fourth down of the game. Dizik looking to throw, gets hit as he throws, and not able to get enough on that one, and turn over on downs. Cardinal gets the stop they were looking for. Great late pressure from the blind side. Warming up to this, huh, Kevin? And, and, and yeah. they did that, and just reading it. Remember we talked? You know, not that long ago, I think it was in that this drive where you get so excited to get to the quarterback that you forget to lock in with discipline. That did not happen that time. That time there was discipline with that blitz, and that's how you have to beat Cuyahoga Heights. So the offense for Cardinal comes back out. Logan Strieber will be in the shotgun. He'll send Christian Kyle in motion. He'll pull it on the handoff, taking himself out to the 34 yard line, gain of about three, so be second down and seven as the Huskies look to put a drive together here to start the second quarter. Yeah, and if you're on defense here for the red rules, like the last drive didn't work out too well, a lot of those same guys that was on offense is now on defense. I think that's critical, you know, you talk about this level, Look, you don't have time to just be like, oh, that offensive play didn't work out too well. You got to respond immediately on defense or Cardinal can get back in this football game. So it will be a second down and seven at the Cardinal 34-yard line. Three receivers this time to the far side. Pitch out to Josh Schultes. Got some running room. Out across the 40, out across midfield. And he, one man to beat inside the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Cardinal! 66 yards. Josh Soltis gets the Huskies on the board. And momentum starting to swing to the other side of the field. And what a run and great blocking on that side of the field as well. And they've had success blocking on the perimeter all season long. And it's really been coming together. Even last week when the game didn't turn out their way, they still were getting the big plays off of the perimeter just like that and the Huskies what two plays after a fourth down stop right back in it you know usually we don't give the the drive summary but we will here because that's an easy one to to calculate 
Well, it's like double A could do that math. <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch the extra point attempt for Cardinal, and that is good. Put in by Landon Gallagher, and they cut the lead in half for Heights. They now trail 14 to seven, but a good feeling on that drive. Two plays, 69 yard drive for the Cardinal Huskies capped off by the 66 yard touchdown run for Josh Soltis and Cardinals on the board. Can you say that one more time? How many, how many yards on that touchdown run? 66. 66. The amount of rushing yards Cardinal had before that play, negative one. I mean, <laughs> just that. that's that's the way to get yourself out of the negative right there. Yeah, getting back into it and and you and, go from there. And double A, we know both of these teams want to run the football. You have good, two good running backs in this on both sides. You have Jacob Zach, who's got two touchdowns on the game, and of course Josh Soltis on the other side for Cardinal. Now puts his name on the score sheet as well. We know it, that just because Heights got up early, it's gonna, it's going to be a four-quarter game to move on in this playoff matchup. And, again, it, we talked about it at the top, you know, the mindset of kids, you know, 14-, 18-year-old kids, how they handle these moments is it, something you can't forecast. You know, now we're in this football game, and we're going to see how Cuyahoga Heights is going to be able to respond working perhaps with a long field depending on this kick return. Late man coming on for Cardinal. That is Soltis. They – only had 10 men, so get your special teams in order. And now Landon Gallagher will kick off. End over end. Caught about the 15-yard line. Seth Garcia trying to get up the far side across the 30. Out to the 32-yard line, it looks like. And it'll be first and 10. So now Heights really kind of back deep, deepest in their own territory that we've seen today. Of course, last drive was the first time they were in their own territory, but now you got to put one of those longer drives together after your defense just gave up a long and respond. A little quick while they're getting instructions, because my math skills are so bad, they were actually plus one in rushing yards before the 66-yard touchdown on the last drive. Looks like Deza keeps it himself that time, and may have lost a yard back to the 31 yard line. So starting to see that defensive front for Cardinal getting that push, feeling that feeling that energy, that adrenaline. They've been here, they've, they've won on this field, so they are not shy of the moment. Well, yeah, and again, the difference so far that we talked about, you know, the two touchdown drives with the Red Wolves were from turnovers from short field and now here we go, second straight drive for they have to go long field. And we'll see what happens here at a second and 11. Second down 11 from their own 31. Garcia goes in motion. Jacob Zach gets the handoff and good push by that offensive line. Just going over the right side of it. Dig Jacob Zach pushes it out to the 41. So from a second down and 11, gains 10. They'll bring up a third down and one, third down and short, exactly where Heights wants to be if they're faced with a third down scenario. Yeah, and what has benefited Cuyahoga Heights to this point for most of this football game, you're talking about each game, five, six, seven, in this case, 10 yards on that last play. And that's been their strength. That's who they are as an offense. Dizek under center for the third and one. Hands to Jacob Zach. And he will get the first down and more out to the 45. A gain of four on third down and one. The chains will move. 9.09 to go. Clock briefly stops as they do move those chains. Jacob Zach will come over. It uh, looks like may have an issue with his helmet. He'll get that looked at. Heights on top, 14 to seven over Cardinal in this Division Six Region 21 playoff opening round matchup in the state playoff tournament cvc tv i'm kevin Rowe, alongside double a anthony alford of course brought to you by the ohio center for oral facial and implant surgery being your playoff edition of the cvc tv game of the week Cog heights first down and 10. dizek pitches out to kusia and had a lane quickly close on that far side 
So you'll gain about three out to the 48, second down and seven. And I would say, you know, yeah, there's been less success on the outside, but even a three-yard gain is still a successful offensive play. <laughs> it still is, even though it doesn't see what we're going to see the five, six-yard gains. Look, a second and seven is still a successful offensive uh, play. And and we've seen the, where Cardinals has had the most success on defense has been setting that edge and, and making those stops. So you start to feel like you're getting that push. You start to push those three-yard gains on the edge out to five or six, seven yards as well. Dizik hands through Kusia across midfield into Cardinal territory to the four, uh, 46 and a half yard line. It'll be third and about two for the Heights offense. And I'm curious what look we're going to see on the offense here on this third down because they've been showing success almost every time running the football even on a third and short. So until Cardinal proves that they can stop that, you obviously keep going. Third down and two at the Cardinal, 47 yard line. 7-15 and a ticking second quarter clock. Dizik goes back under center. Dizik in trouble and will go down in the backfield. Looked like a miscommunication on that off option read and Dizik when he looked up had Cardinal defenders in his face they dropped him for a loss back to midfield it'll be a fourth down and five for the Red Wolves we always say about this offense it's a beautiful looking offense but everything has to go right everything everything has to go right because if it doesn't then if, if any miscommunications you have a play like that so fourth down and five, Heights will keep their offense on the field, right at midfield. And Cardinal will take their first time out of the half with 6.27 to go here in the first half. And another good time to thank our title sponsor, Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery, bringing you this week's playoff edition of the CBC TV Game of the Week. Their practice will diagnose and treat your facial pain, injuries, and also offer you a full range of dental implants along with bone grafting procedures. Look no further than the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery for all of your oral and cosmetic surgery needs. Visit their website at www.ohsurgery.com. That is ohsurgery.com. So Heights coming out of the timeout. Cardinal getting their final defensive instructions on this fourth down and five. Can Cardinal get another stop on fourth down, get their offense who just had a Two play drive capped off by a 66 yard touchdown run by Josh Soltis. And they bring that offense back out, feeling good about what they were able to do up front from an offensive line standpoint. So this time, Dizik back deep. Looks like kind of in that no man's land, but he will punt this one away. Land about the 20 and bounce inside and be downed by Zach Zolads at the eight at the 19 yard line. First and ten, Cardinal inside their own 20. I didn't think we would see punts. Just <laughs> things were going, it's just going. Not, I mean, right call. I mean, it's just a playing a field position game, and you know make Cardinal again prove that they could drive down the field like they did the first time. And you just brought it up what I was going to kind of ask you, like punt that football away, yes, to hem them back deep, but also prove can you go on another long drive. We've, we've had more success defensively in this game. Can you do it again? I'd rather see that than have them have the momentum and go on a short field. That's what Al Martin told his team in that huddle. Soltis gets tripped up as – he found some, he was, looked at some space on that far side of the field, but gets tripped up after a short gain of one out to the 20, second down and nine, as we near the six minute mark of the second quarter. And that's just reading your keys as well, you know, when you feel like, okay, oh, there's an open cap. <laughs> Sometimes you do see it, and all of a sudden you feel that trip, 
And yeah, it's just defensively reading, you know, reading the keys, reading the, you know, your the guards, and knowing exactly where to go in pursuit of the football. Logan Strieber, junior quarterback, has the snap. He'll hand to Soltis. It's better push that time out across the 25, out to the 27 and a half yard line. He'll push the nose of the football out to the 28. So bring up a third and short, third and two, or third and one as they put it up on the board. So now Cardinal face with one of those third and short where your offensive playbook you feel like is more open in these type of scenarios. Yeah, but it, and again, they have the flexibility. They got their running back who's ran for over 1,200 yards on the ground. I, there's opportunities here if you're Cardinal. Shriver will take it himself, trying to find that first down, and he will get it and more. Out across the 30 to the 33-yard line, gain of five. And first down, Cardinal trying to put a drive together here late as we get late in the second quarter. And the styles here are a little different. This time here you see the, the Huskies more traditional for 2022, spread offense, spreading out the defense, and utilizing the quarterback keeper up the middle. And we see more of that in 2022 and sets up for another first down. Sure, will be by himself in the shotgun this time. He'll run far side, got some space across the 40, get knocked out of bounds there, but a good run on first down. Bring up a second down and three at the 40-yard line. So again, you know, Cuyahoga Heights offensively, you know, the, the inside game, kind of utilizing that inside and maybe veer out. In this case, with the Huskies, utilizing the perimeter and then using that threat to go inside. Get two contrasting styles. And they'll stay in the same formation. Two receivers far side, three here to the near side. Straver will move. Soltis in motion. Fake the handoff. And as he went to go pull it out of the belly of Soltis, Strever falling to the turf. So a loss on the play. Back to the 39. And it'll Move it back to the 38 as the third down marker was a yard ahead of where they had moved the football back to. So third down and five after a good gain on first. 3.55 to go, and that clock continues to move. And positioning-wise, that was uh, – I don't think they had much success from the start, only because from a positioning standpoint, it made it a little tough. So Soltis will run it himself again on the edge, pushing for the first down. He's got it, pushing to midfield. Dragging a couple defenders. Seth Kusia finally able to bring him down right at midfield. But on third and five, Strever does it himself again. Another first down. And they still have two timeouts in the quarter. Plenty of time left in the half. And the offense works very hard on, on the blocking standpoint on that left side, on the perimeter side. And it's showing. And it has shown in this second quarter uh, so far. I want to see how Kyle Hawker Heights adjust to that play at least in the rest of this half and going into halftime. So at midfield, first and 10, 3.17 to go. Strieber looking to pass, looks downfield, looks to the left end, to the right, looks like that got knocked down. Defensive line, four heights, not able to get to the quarterback, but they got those, those big mitts up, able to knock it down to the turf. And trying to switch things around, but hey, with that football being, being hit there, the line of scrimmage, Kind of stops things now. And and at this point, Cuyahoga Heights defensively. All right, second to ten. The Huskies a little bit more limited on what they can do. Can't you tell us the playoffs? I mean. <laughs> you can see you, and you see the chess match continue to go back and forth. And as a flag flies for a false start, it's it's two teams that you can tell know each other well and just moving those pieces around throughout the game. And it feels like, and we say this in football at times, like it's the five or six plays that really, you know, determine the overall score. It's every play, every play, mm -hmm. it serves a different level of importance on both sides of the ball. And we're seeing it, especially after the start that the Cuyahoga Heights had, Cardinal, able to get the touchdown, working their way back into this football game. Every move important. 
Shotgun for Strever. Gets the snap, looking left, throws left, and through the hands. Had Gallagher right there. Gallagher started to look up towards the chain gang on the other on the far side of the field. Didn't secure the catch, and it'll be a third and long. Kind of where we've seen this Cardinal offense most of the day, what they've been trying to stay out of. And this Heights defense has been up to test for the most part outside of the one drive for Cardinal. Yeah, and, and that was the one big play. You know, just kind of limiting things. I'll tell you what, Gallagher, I know right now, you know, number one, and Cardinals just called uh, their second timeout. And maybe this timeout is to look at Gallagher, look at some of the other players, uh, and, and say, look, you know, mistakes happen. Mm -hmm. You know, mistakes happen. You know, yeah, you don't want, you don't want to drop ball. Uh, and, and I think sometimes, and we do it in our own careers, sometimes – we criticize ourselves more than a coach or a boss could ever criticize, you know, our own performance. And the coaching staff, they're looking at Gallagher and they're looking at the players like, hey, it happens. It's one play. You still got more football to go. And more than likely, we're going back to you. So just just stay with it and you'll be in good shape. Especially at, at this age and this, this level. We're, we are so blessed here in Northeast Ohio with the, the level of coaching, and we know football runs deep in the state of Ohio itself, but especially Northeast Ohio and, and some of the big-name coaches that you hear. There's coaches that you don't hear, that you don't get to hear about all the time, but we see and we talk to all the time here on CBC TV. They always have the, the, the pulse of their team. They know what it takes for each kid when they make a mistake to get them back in it, when they make a good play, keeping them level-headed to make that next big play. Soltis will get the handoff and get back to midfield, but it'll bring up a fourth down and 10. As we just ticked under three minutes to go. Heights leading, Cardinal 14 to seven. So a promising drive stalls at midfield. Looks like Cardinal will punt this football away. Key here will be that the snap of the football. We saw the issue in the, in the first quarter. Yeah. and. I believe me, if that happens again, you're going to see a flip of the scoreboard like we did in the first quarter. Seth Crucia and Zach Unger back deep for Heights. Kyle Sinclair gets the punt away, goes out of bounds. We'll see where the official marks it out. He marks it, he steps off over the 25 up to the 30 yard line, goes the official to mark first down and 10 for the Heights offense with one timeout. Both teams with one timeout and 2.22 to go. Heights still leading 14 to seven. Taylor two quarters so far, double A in this one. Cardinal able to get the big play we were just talking about with that 66 yard touchdown run by Josh Soltis. Need to, they need to put more drives together. Heights, of course, looking to put one together here to try to go back up two scores. And the thing that might work against uh, Heights right now is going to be the clock with only one timeout. Dizek will go under center. Jacob Zach behind him. Garcia in motion. And it looks like Dizek kept it himself. Over the 30 out. Maybe a gain of one on the play. So second down and nine. And this Heights this Heights offense that you know kind of goes traditional with the with the huddle slows things down. In this situation you would think that you would see the team kind of speed things up, but that wouldn't be them. Yeah, that's not who they are. They are not speeding this up. They will not speed up to your liking. That will not happen. But, and that's by design. And, and it's worked out well for them all year. All these years it's worked out well. Dizek will this time hand off up the middle, out to the four, just about to the 40-yard line, maybe a half yard shy of a first down. Under a minute 30 now to go. Some subs checking in, hustling in now for Heights on this third down and short. But to your point, Kevin, just a bit ago, as a defender, it, it throws you off timing-wise because it, it takes forever to get that play off, and then they run hard. And power formation, power football for Heights. Jacob Zach out to the 45-yard line. Said, no, 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 I won't go down. It took several Cardinal defenders including Reese Soltis to get him to the ground on a first down and 10, so the clock stops briefly. And I think 
Heights will take their final timeout of the half. They will. So 105 to go. Cuyahoga Heights first and 10 at their own 45, leading 14 to 7. And we made a point earlier in the game. We saw it on the last play. The offensive line on these third and shorts. And again, they they move the same. There's five, there's five offensive linemen, and they all, no matter the age, they all move the same, they block the same, the steps are the same, and it showed on the last play, and that's why in these third and shorts, they've been successful for that exact reason. So what coming out of this timeout, Double A, what do you see as the approach? Only a minute five, now no timeouts for Heights. We, they're going to spread things out. They're going to try to try to get a quick score here, and it looks like they will. I'll tell you what, though, if you're the defense, still watch up the middle. Watch for a possible sneak here, or, or a keeper, I should say. Dizik looking to pass. Got a man open, floats it in and out of the hands, trying to adjust. He was His receiver, Anthony Catuzas, was looking inside, had to turn to his outside, and not able to corral the football. So a second down and 10, clock stops, exactly a minute to go. Yeah, and, 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 I'll, and I'll say this, great defensive play, obviously, but also offensively, clock stops, minute. So there's still an opportunity. They got to prove, though, right here that they are able to throw down the field at a consistent level to really open this football game up. Two receivers either side of the formation. Dizek all alone in, in the shotgun. Back to pass, looks left, now comes back right on the screen. Great stick in the middle of the field. Clayton Cochran comes up to make the hit. Francis Connors, who had daylight on the that same type of screen pass earlier in the game, gets met, and a quick stop. Clock will continue to tick with no timeouts, and a third down and eight. All right, same formation, two receivers either side. I wonder if you start seeing defenders probably drop it back a little bit here. Jizik back to pass, sets up the screen again. Connors able to corral it, trying to get out of bounds. And Soltis rides him out of bounds, but the referee says to keep running the clock. I believe the clock should stop. Did he make it out? He, he made it out of bounds, right? Or He made it out of bounds, but didn't get to the marker, and they let the clock continue to run, and we will hit halftime here in Cuyahoga Heights. So a good play by Connors to corral that pass. And Josh Soltis made the stop. Right before the marker, he got out of bounds, and I'm not sure why they continued. He wasn't ridden backwards. He, he was going forwards and was pushed out of bounds. Usually the clock will stop in that instance, but it does not, and we hit halftime as the Red Wolves from Cuyahoga Heights lead in this Division VI Region 21 playoff opening round matchup, 14-7 over the visiting Cardinal Huskies. We'll be back for your second half action here on CBC TV. Stay tuned, though. We will have... Both marching band performances at halftime, as we always do to spotlight all of the student athletes out here on the field. Until then, Cuyahoga Heights 14, Cardinal 7. We'll be back in this, for the second half in just a few minutes.
Out our show this evening with a song selected back in 2003 by the American rock band Fountains of Wayne. This final tune will also feature our traditional drum break and band dance. Here is Stacy's Mind.
Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 Cardinal Huskies Marching Band and Cardinal Silk Spangles. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Mr. Noah Hamrick, with assistant director Grace Brown, girls team advisor coach Kathy McClappyham, and band co-presidents Hyatt Taylor and Macy Boytek, we proudly present the Kaiga Heights Mighty Marching Red Wolves.
Welcome back to your CVC TV Game of the Week Playoff Edition here on ChagrinValleyConference.com and the Chagrin Valley Conference YouTube channel. We are just about ready to start the third quarter as Cuyahoga Heights leads at home 14-7 over the Cardinal Huskies. There are 12, 12 CVC teams in action, so make sure you head on over while you have a moment to ChagrinValleyConference.com. If you're right here on the website watching the game right now, head over, click out of the game for a second, head over because there are links to the other live streams of the other CBC games going on. A couple of them, Perry and Kirtland up big, and uh, Trinity was losing in their matchup, which would be in the same bracket as this game, as this is the 6-11 matchup in Division Six, Region 21. Kevin Arnold alongside double-A, Anthony Alford. Cardinal will be kicking off to Cuyahoga Heights, so they will receive the second half kickoff. And two touchdowns from Andy Jacobzak, who has 11 carries and 60 yards on the ball game, plus those two touchdowns for Cuyahoga Heights. On the other side, the only scoring play, a 66-yard touchdown run from Josh Soltis, who has six carries, 80 yards, so he is averaging a whopping 13.3 yards per carry. Only four total uh, receptions in the game, four completed passes total between both teams in the ball game. So both teams focusing on the run and defensively, Cuyahoga Heights came out strong in the first half. Double A message at halftime for from both of these coaches well the the the, me the message for both of these teams is we're going to stick with our identity and keep running the football and the key is going to be what's going to happen up front offense and defensive lines see who comes through here in this game as landon gallagher kicks off lands at the 20 kusia collects it at about his 17 gets out across the 25 to the 26 yard line and that is where the Red Wolves of Cuyahoga Heights will start this second half and their first possession of this half offensively. I think the other thing, too, and we saw it on the kick return, protecting the football, and I think that's going to be huge because you're going to start to see because of the volume in which both these teams are running the football, maybe we're going to start seeing some strip attempts from these teams. So we're going to both of these teams are going to have to watch how they control and hold on to the football. Heights 
will get back in that power offense. Devin Dizik, their quarterback under center. He will actually fake the he'll fake the handoff, looking to throw down deep. And we've seen it all game long. The reason we have only four completions total between both of these teams, double A, as he was looking for Jacob Stewart. Just that disconnect between quarterback and receivers on both sides. Both sides used to being running teams have implemented a little bit more of the past than we thought we would see here tonight. And I'll tell you what, Jacob Stewart, uh, the senior, if they could somehow, Kyle Hogan Heights, get the football in his hands, uh, it's going to be a difference of a football game. It will be a difference, and they're trying to do that here. Came in as their leading receiver, 14 receptions and 322 yards on the season with five touchdowns, and a flag flies on a second down and 10, just 12 seconds into the third quarter. And it'll back up on a false start. It'll back up Heights five yards back to the 21-yard line, second and 15. And this is where, as Cardinal gets back into the ball game and tries to get their offense out there, these second and long scenarios, first and long, second and long scenarios is where they need to kind of make that next play that they weren't able to in the first half. And we didn't see much of that in the first half at all, so not an ideal start. Stewart gets the toss around the edge and gets across the 25, close to the 30, dragged out of bounds just shy at the 29. So good gain, a little bit more success on the edge as Cardinal had the advantage definitely on the edges in that first half. And I'll tell you what, again, Stewart, he, we just talked about it a bit ago, he is an athlete. He is that athlete. You get the football in his hands. He can make some things happen. And somehow made this a third and manageable. And you start to hear the fans here, they realize the importance of this third down play in this playoff game. So Diesel will be all alone in the backfield in the shotgun. On the far hash, third and eight. Throws on the slant. Stewart's got it. And gets out to the 40-yard line across to the 41 and it'll be a first down heights. Good connection there, good timing leading the receiver. And Dizek to Stewart gets the drive sustained and those chains move on the far side of the field where you see the Cardinal Huskies. And think of the adjustments that was made between first down and second and third. Okay, the big play didn't get to Stewart the first time, so let's just hand the ball off, get it to him, and then off a of slant shorter successful plays to drive the ball down the field. Late substitution for the Cardinal defense. Player limping off the field and Heights good run out to close to midfield. Andy Jacobs Zach another carry. And good gain on only a second down and one to go nine yards on first down. And just getting back on track and a a little bit of a point was getting at in the first half. You know, Cuyahoga Heights, they're going to go at their own pace. And it seems like it's a slower pace. And it's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But once the play starts, they run hard. And it throws you off track as a defense. It really does. Tizek under center. Kusia goes in motion. He'll keep it himself and get the first down into Cardinal territory. Down to the 47-yard line, a gain of three on third, on second and one, and the chains move quickly. And the thing is, if you're the Huskies, that's probably the best way to defend that play. I mean, you eliminate the first option up the middle. You, you contain the outside the perimeter. But even with the quarterback keeping it, it's still a first down. I mean, even with a short, short run, uh, can't go wrong with that play offensively. First and 10 at the Cardinal 47-yard line are the Red Wolves. Dizek keeps himself, gets around the edge, across the 40, inside the 35, pushed out at the 30-yard line. Again, a 17 on first and 10. Dizek reading well here in this game. He has had those fakes, and now space on the edges on the outside four heights. And that's going to make this offense that much more dangerous when you got the power upside, up through the middle, and you got the speed on the outside, and you're setting the edge yourself. A lot more yardage out there to be gained. And that play should have been a loss, too. I mean, <laughs> the defender had him in the, in the backfield there. Excellent spin move to create the, the big yardage. 
Looks like Zach Zolads comes in and gets the carry. Across the 30-yard line, they'll give forward progress down to the 28. Gain of two, second down and eight. And that's what you have to do defensively. You have to, again, just multiple hats, you know, to the football, and that's where you go. I mean, I mean Cox was there, Soltis was there. I mean, it's just defending and, and going from there, and that has to happen. The, the tough thing is you do it one play, great. You have to do that every play, every play defensively. So Laz will stay in the backfield. They'll send a receiver to either side. Dizek under center. Second down and eight from the Husky 28-yard line. Dizek fakes. Got a man open. That's Seth Kusia, and he will just be tackled before the end zone. Not, he's kind of juggling his feet, not able to keep his balance. Goes down, and now Heights trying to go quickly right at the doorstep. Great play. Great play, and the thing that you realize too, quarterback, and you see with all these option offenses, look at how low the quarterback lines up under center. It is hard to see what he's going to do with the initial play. So first and goal at the one-yard line. Man goes in motion. Dizek hands off to Jacob Zach, pushes his way, waiting the signal. Both officials come in, and both arms go up from both officials. Jacob Zach with the hat trick goes in from a yard out. And the Huskies go back up, excuse me, the Red Wolves go back up by two scores. 20 to 7, 8.36 to go. It has been the Jacob Zach show in those first and goal scenarios. Yeah, just right there. And I, I wish I could say, like, oh, there's a magic play to stop that. Uh, but this offensive line almost ensuring that every time they're in a short yard situation, they push forward and they get in. So no, uh, Noah Wilson will come on to attempt the extra point. Ball up and through the uprights again, 21 to seven. Heights regains their two score advantage, their two touchdown advantage, 21 to seven. And like you were just talking about double A, that push up front, when they smell the end zone, that offensive line goes to work. Yeah, they go to work every single time. And, and again, the big play before to set that up, it's the, what happens, right? You know, the first half, it seems like defensively you do everything right, and you're waiting for the big run, you're waiting for the big run, and you have guys in place to make something happen out of it, and somehow, some way, receiver slips over the middle, and those are the ones you look at like, oh my goodness, that happened. <laughs> it happened, and you're so frustrated. You know, but good play call, good find for Cuyahoga Heights to set that up to make that happen. But how will Cardinal respond? We're gonna find out right now. 8.36 to go in the third quarter. Now this Division Six Region 21 playoff matchup between the number six seed Cuyahoga Heights Red Wolves and the number 11 seed Cardinal Huskies. Again, a different, different game format already than what we saw just two weeks ago when Cardinal got the win 16 to 10. One of only two games, as you mentioned in the first half, that the Red Wolves defense gave up double digit points and took a loss on the season. Cardinal on the, turn, on the return. Troy Doman gets some good field position out across the 40. Doman's had a strong game, Kevin. He's had a strong game in all three phases, but especially, you know, just the return there. He's been at the attack defensively. And the Huskies give themselves great field position. They only got to drive 60 yards to get in the end zone. You're first and 10 at their 40, and that's what you're kind of looking for. You're looking for one of the three phases to, to step up. You're down in the game. Can Cardinal respond again? Saw them go down two scores in that first quarter and a great response, and that's a credit to the coaching staff led by Chris Parati. Soltis on the carry across the 45 near midfield. Good gain on first down, gain of eight out to the 48-yard line. They'll actually bring it back as the 
Spot of the football will be just shy of the 47, so second down and about three, a long three, but second down and three. Uh, I'll tell you what makes Salta so good. When he runs the football, the, the strides that he has, like he's not a seven-yard gain here. He's not taking that many steps to get there. It, it's, it's, the, it's those abilities that made a short person like me jealous. <laughs> because when I ran, like, on the track and the football field, I had to take a bunch of steps. He doesn't. <laughs> you know, Double A, every time we're together, you mentioned being short about yourself at least once, once a broadcast. Well, Give yourself more credit, man. You, uh, you have a, the voice of the, of, of the angels here on CBC TV. I appreciate it. You know, you know every time I think of my shortcomings and, uh, you know, we go from there. I'm here to pick you up. Thank buddy. you. Thank you. And that's what the post-game report will be all about. <laughs> and as we were doing that, Cardinal picked up a first down. So first down and 10 into Heights territory. A good start to this drive. Schrieger will be in the shotgun. He'll hand to Soltis. Gets out of one tackle, gets out of another. Slips on the turf and goes down. Gain of a, of a couple. Down to the 41-yard line. And you just see the shiftiness of mm -hmm. Soltis. You were just talking about it. You know, once he gets in that open field, the way he can glide, gets up to that second level so quick, but also when everything is hemmed in, he can make a man miss. And that's a great point is that once he gets it to that second level, it's tough to bring him down. And he controls himself too. So it's not it's nothing like out of out of the range of what he can't do. Like he controls himself and runs the football really well. Strieber keeps it himself, looking for the first down, gets out of a tackle inside the 30. Over the 20, inside the 15, 10, 5, still oh, going, and reaches for the goal line. They will mark him just shy. Down at the half yard line, but Strever, a uh, 40 yard run, gets a first down and goal for Cardinal, and here, comes the, here come the Huskies. And again, this is what makes facing this tape tricky, just when you think, okay, so since we got him, we got him, good to go. Here comes Strever every time, and he has his own set of skills when running the football. Hard to bring him down in the open field. So Strever and Soltis look over at Coach Ferrati for the final signals. They'll stay in the shotgun. Strever calls his own number, reaches out, and touchdown Huskies. Strever got him down there, and he caps it off with the one-yard touchdown run. And Cardinal cuts in the lead once again. 5.50 to go, third quarter. Penning the extra point, looking to cut that back down to just one score game. And here, Cardinal being the only team this season to score double digit points against this Heights defense twice in one year and looking for more. It's just incredible, it's just an incredible drive. And again, that one-two punch has helped them out all season long doing it here tonight. Landon Gallagher on to attempt the extra point. Ball down, kick up, and over end. Through the uprights and good. 5.50 to go. Heights holding on to their 21 to now 14 lead. Cardinal getting back on the score sheet. One long touchdown run today by Josh Soltis and then a short touchdown run from the quarterback, Logan Strever, after a beautiful 40-yard scamper to get him in position to score that that touchdown. The one thing I'm curious about on the Cuyahoga Heights side of things, they work so hard offensively, and especially up front, which is their bread and butter. That's what they do. They work so hard offensively. You know, most teams that they face usually don't have the capabilities to respond in a way that Cardinal is able to respond on their own as far as physicality. So I wonder how much energy do they have left on the defensive drives, Cuyahoga Heights, after they work so hard offensively. And I wonder that's part of why those big plays are being given up uh, defensively. And we know a lot of the players are going to be playing both ways for most of the game. You know, I've had the opportunity throughout the high school football season to, to cover some other other schools for other uh, uh, other places this season, and you know, yes, going out to Division One and Division Division Two schools, where you can bring in, you know, a, a group for defense, and, and then just just a one group for offense, and they can just focus on that side of the football. And the the stadiums are full; they're big, 
you got to give a, even a lot more credit to some of these lower schools, and especially here in the CVC where we see guys playing both ways the whole time. That takes a lot of conditioning that starts in the summer and comes to October and November, keeps you rolling into playoff time. Miscommunication on the kickoff. Seth Crucia will take it. Coming here to the near side. Across, not able to get out across the 25, and then a flag comes out on the tackle. Yeah, that's something that probably have to be called there. Uh, and the, the big thing I'll make as well, real quick, is to your point, physical conditioning, but also mental conditioning as well. You know, being able to respond and get back, because a lot of these players, offense, defense, and in most cases, some form of special teams as well. So, you know, that that's huge to try to come back from. Face mask penalty on Cardinal. So give him 15 yards out to the 40. So much better starting field position. And then uh, Cardinal player does go down. His Christian Cowell, it looks like, on the ground. And he is in some distress. So we wish him the best. And maybe it's maybe we overdo it, double A, but we I think we justifiably give good credit to the great medical um, facilities programs that we ha have here in Northeast Ohio, world-renowned programs that we have here that help staff the, uh, the training uh, training rooms here at the, at the different high schools and keep these student athletes safe and try to get them back on the field in a safe and healthy manner. Yeah, you think too, like, you know, in most cases, like the trainers, they're with their teams from day one. You know, it's almost, you know, you, by first name status, <laughs> every game, Saturday mornings is always the visit to the trainer's room every time. And there's much an important part of not just the football teams, but all the sports teams um, within the CVC. So as Kyle gets help to the sideline again, wishing him all of the best. And we you know, talk about the, the training staffs, and, yeah, they're with these teams, but they're also with the soccer team, mm -hmm. the volleyball team, the, the cross country. They're going out to all these events because you got one trainer for the school. It's not one trainer just for the team and, you know, having, having a bunch of them. But, uh, you know, again, having, having those resources, those medical resources here, uh, allowing these, these student athletes to have the opportunity to go out there in their extracurriculars to, to go out there on the field and, and have an opportunity, especially here in playoff time. To, to continue their season in what have been two great seasons by both of these schools and plenty of time left in this one to write a new chapter in their story. 5.44 to go in the third quarter. First and 10 heights from their own 40-yard line, leading 21-14. to 14. A run over the left side. Jacob Zach pushes close to the 45, just shy. About a four-yard gain, second down to six. Yeah, and with this physical play, you do start to get concerned about the weather. And, yes, it's, it's playoff football, of course, and this is something you train for. But it is still – your body still has to get used to these temperatures. We're going to talk lower 50s right now, so upper 40s. It's getting a little cool, chilly out there. Looks like Stewart goes in motion. Dizek uh, looking to throw in connection. Francis Connors. That's – Knowing where you're at, your home field along that sideline, Connors gets his feet down. Good throw. And another first down as we go into the five-minute mark here in the third quarter. Yeah, the junior tight end and, and linebacker just get after. We talked about on the defensive side how, how big of a game Connors needs to have offensively making plays as well. Tezik under center. Man in motion. And... Jacob Zach goes up the middle inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. And, again, just pushing through. And, you know, you talk about all the time, like, how much you take it over, you know, offensively. Now, at this point, if you're the Huskies, you're probably tempted to have another man, you know, in the box to contain the running game. You know, but as Kyle Hawker Heights has shown, once you are tempted to do so, we will throw it over the top. And that's what they're taking at any point of this drive. Second down and five. And a 38 pitch out to Stewart. Stewart around the edge. Gets pushed out of bounds. Just shy of the first down marker. 
Looks like it'll be marked at the 36-yard line. So only a gain of two will bring up a third down and three and a crucial another crucial third down for this Cardinal defense. And I like the, the blocking matchups on the outside between receivers and DBs. And again, who says receivers and defensive backs don't care about winning one-on-one -on -one battles when they don't have the football? <laughs> and they want to do that. They want to win that outside containment battle. And that sets up this third and three. Third and three from the Husky, 36. Handoff to Jacob Zach. And he gets over the 30, gets first down yardage and more. So the 26, a gain of 10. They only needed three, and he gives them seven extra yards. Jacob Zach starting to add to his tally at 60 yards at halftime, but he's also increasing that yards per attempt. And again, just those extra looks that is, that's thrown at this defense every single time. We, we might see a similar formation, but as far as where the players are going, it's different almost every time. 3.48 to go. Heights looking to add to their 21 to 14 lead. Jacob Zach brought down a five yard gain on first down, second down and five. I'll tell you what, I wonder, and we might have to go through some means to find out, he runs like a track star. Just the way that he, he comes out of the blocks, like in track and field, starting blocks, he runs just like he's running in track and field. And it's incredible. It's set up his big runs and his touchdown runs uh, this evening. Second down and five from the 21. Devin Dizek under center. Hands off to Jacob Zach again. Inside the 15, 10, five, stays on his feet and goes down at the three yard line. Watch, he's gonna beg, he's gonna want that football again. He wants another one. Look at, look at how he is running the football on that replay and just the leg strength that he has there. Just incredible. And a first to go coming up, Kevin. First and goal for the Red Wolves. Been set up by Andy Jacobsack on this drive. Dizek under center. Man goes in motion. Handoff. Pushing for the goal line. And touchdown Red Wolves again. 2.35 to go. The Red Wolves add another. I believe it was Andy Jacobsack again. Four touchdowns on the night still. Time left in the third and another quarter to go. And again, he is running the football hard. And he's running so hard, he has to light up for this extra point. And he's, so, he's like, oh my goodness, I need to catch my breath there after that big run. So Jacob Zach stays in on the kick protection team. And Noah Wilson will come in to attempt his fourth extra point of the game. He's hit on his first three. And the fourth is the same result. 2.35 to go. Heights responds after Cardinal responds. And they go back up two touchdowns, 28 to 14. Handling their business, Kevin. And business-like. We talked about in the pregame hit, you know, the feel of this game and knowing the responsibilities. It's always tricky. I think. Any playoff game that involves divisional opponents, or in this case, conference opponents, it's always tricky because you just, you've seen them before as recently as two weeks ago with these two teams, and you just don't know how, how both of these teams are going to react to situations like this. But you know the response is going to be true to a form and great response for Kyle Hogan Heights to be able to drive right down the field, work their behinds off, and get the touchdown. So Heights, again, regains that two-touchdown advantage. It has been all Andy Jacobs Eck on the Heights side of things here tonight. One of the many Red Wolf players that came in with a purpose. We've mentioned it several times, but it is worth mentioning when you have a game against the same team only two weeks later, and that game happened late in the regular season, happened on your home field. You're going to have a little bit extra in it. And you're basically, look, 
you're at the peak of your playbook. And, you know, this is not like they met up in week two while these teams were trying to figure themselves out. You meet up in week nine, you pretty much know where you are as a team. Noah Wilson kicks off. Troy Doman on the return. Another decent return. Out to the 30-yard line this time. And now if you're Cardinal AA, are you sticking to the same game plan? As you sh yeah, you should. Yeah, you should. I mean, I mean the, the running game. Signaling something over here um, as they are pointing off to the end zone. Referees will hold up play as they're talking with Coach Martin and the uh, Red Wolf staff. They're trying to get something worked out. We're getting the clock worked out and now ready for play again. Cardinal going back in that traditional formation and Soltis will get the carry. Not going anywhere that time, dancing around the hole. And that defensive front, four heights, brings them down, second down and 10. Yeah, this defense, certain members of this defense are like, we got to get this stop right now. I need a little bit of time to kind of, I want to celebrate the offensive drive. Let's, you know, let's get a stop here defensively and, and do this. And that's always one of the biggest keys, and especially defensively, when you get when you get those scores and you feel like you are winning in the trenches, you have you're getting the push. Key is to get that offense back out there and continue to wear down your opponent. Yeah, and. Cardinals going to call a timeout here. The concern now that you start to get on their sidelines is they simply don't have the numbers that Cuyahoga Heights has. So now that's becoming a factor as far as substitutions, as far as depth. And you start to wonder maybe they have to make a big move now to just keep up with this football game before it gets away. And this is your CBC TV Game of the Week Playoff Edition in Division 6, Region 21 here on CBC TV, which is presented to you by the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery with their doctors, Keith Schneider, Don Lewis, and Jill Weber. Their specialties include dental surgery, implants, corrective jaw and facial surgery, along with trauma reconstruction. For all of your oral surgery needs, visit the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery website at www.ohsurgery.com. That is www.ohsurgery.com. We thank them for their support. Chagrin Valley Conference, CBC TV, and the student athletes you see out here on the field. And of course, AA, we are graced with Don Lewis, the, you know, from Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery, but also the commissioner of the Chagrin Valley Conference, graced with his presence up here in the booth at oh, Kyle Heights yes. tonight. Yeah, he with us last week over at Great Lakes Cheese Stadium. That was a good pop there defensively. And now defensively for Heights, they have, uh, they have Cardinal in a third and long scenario. <laughs> As Don Lewis is trying to tip us for the, uh, the live mention here in the uh, Trying to tip booth. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tip, tip would go to you. You've been working. The, you've been working this all season long. Double ah, you deserve it. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Now you're trying to make me feel better after the big. <laughs> <laughs> Third uh, down and ten. Streamer back to pass. He connects and gets a first down. If they give him the yardage, it'll be close. Yeah, that's going to be very close there, Kevin. Spot of the football, just shy. It looks like of a first down. Thought he had pushed his way across. That official on the far side could see a little bit better than we can. And he may have gone down just shy, so it'll bring up a fourth down and one. Under 40 seconds to go, third quarter. Strever around the left edge again, pushing for the first down, and he just gets it. A heck of a stick by Jacob Zach, but Strever, just a little bit more power, gets a first down. And you can tell the, the amount of confidence that this line has offensively and running the football that way and doing it in big situations. As Jacob Zach stays on the turf, so officials call for time. Clock stops with 33 seconds left. 
I'll Jacobson. tell you what, he, he wants, look at him getting off there. He wants back in in this action. So Jacob Zach comes off under his own power. Good to see as he made a heck of a hit in the hole. Schriever's been able to pick up 10, 12, 15 yards. We even saw the 40-yard run just with that very same play following the left side of that offensive line. And that time, Jacob Zach got through all the traffic, made the stop, but Cardinal still gets the first down. Schriever back to pass, looking left. He'll roll to his left. Gets up the sideline and then gets met again. Two-yard gain, and Schriever feels the impact of that one near the end of the quarter. Yeah, defense making a statement there on the outside. And I'll tell you what, Cardinal wants to get back and perhaps run another play before the end of the quarter. Four seconds, two and one, and we have hit triple zeros through three quarters here at Cuyahoga Heights as they lead 28 to 14 over Cardinal in a Division VI Region 21 opening playoff matchup. Winner of this game will move on to face the winner of Valley Christian and Trinity, and at half Valley Christian was up in that matchup as that is a three versus a 14. We have the six seed versus the 11 here in the opening round. It has been a tale of the running game for both of these schools. And right now, the biggest difference is Cuyahoga Heights coming out with a purpose in that first quarter, establishing that two touchdown lead and has not, has not let Cardinal get any closer than being down by one touchdown. Cardinal looking to score quickly here and try to get some, find some sort of answer for the offense of Heights with that push that they've been able to generate here in the second half. And, and Kevin, it goes back to what we talked about, you know, with the playoffs. As far, every play matters. And a two touchdown difference. Remember, you had the, the, the mishandle of the punt snap in the first possession. The second possession was an interception. So you had two drives where Kyle Guys went up by two touchdowns with short, short field, only using the red zone to get in. And Cardinal has been playing catch up this whole time. Now they have shown to this point that they have the ability to compete and play with Cuyahoga Heights, but you do put yourself at a disadvantage where you are playing catch up really from the start of the football game. And this is the, this is the type of effort that Coach Parati talked to us before the game. The team has been in most of their games all year long, even if the score lines don't necessarily show it. They've been in all year long because of this kind of effort, because of their ability to respond to adversity. Straver keeps this one himself. Better end result on the second down and eight play out near midfield. Bring up a third down and two. Strievers, that to be understated, really good. And he's, again, one of those players, You, when you have him with the football, you can do anything that you want. Now, I would like to see at some point, all right, let's keep the defense honest, go over the top here. Keep, keep things spread out here. Soltis inside, but Strever will call his own number. And again, it'll depend on the spot once again. Reaching those long arms out is Strever. Needed to get to the 48. The officials are running in at the 48. Tell you what, based on this spot, it's gonna be really close. He might have it. And they do signal first down without calling the chains out. So on third and two, Strever just gets two by the nose of the football. And they push into Heights territory. First and 10, 11, 12 on the fourth quarter clock. Again, spread formation this time, three receivers on the near side. Soltis coming around and not much room. That Heights defense has at least found an answer, made an adjustment on the runs from Soltis. Strever's the one having the most success here in this half. Yeah. and. And to this point, that's fine. You know, it's just being able to switch things up. I mean, you game plan all week to stop the one-two attack. But here we go in a second down. See if Calgary Heights can continue to do that. 
Schubert takes the snap, hands off to Josh Soltis, who gets free across the 40, up the far sideline, inside the 20, 15, and he did step out of bounds back at the 19-yard line. But a great run that time. We just mentioned it. And apologies if we had the broadcaster curse on the uh, Red Wolves defense, but Soltis finds a hole, breaks out of a tackle, gets up the field. And they are in the red zone, are the Cardinal Huskies. Yeah, if it wasn't for Jacob Stewart, that was six, you know, on a touchdown saving tackle. You know, so, again, they, they, this has been the second half. This has been the second half. It really started for the second quarter. This has been two straight quarters of football where both of these offenses running the football hard, offensive line putting in work. First and 10 at the Red Wolves 19. Strever takes it himself. Oh He's got some space. 15, gets around the edge. Inside the 10, pushes his way into the end zone. Goes Logan Strever for the 19 yard run. Celebrations all around in the end zone. And again, just when you think Heights is taking control, Cardinal answers right back. And here's the thing, like we kind of mentioned before, Weather's getting a little chillier. It's tougher to bring big men down. And really tough to bring them down in open space and open field. So on to attempt the extra point once again, landing Gallagher. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and good. No good. May have missed it just to the right from our vantage point up here. So a key miss on an extra point Makes it a eight point game, 10-13 to go. Cuyahoga Heights Red Wolves on top 28 to 20. But again, the answer each and every single time, this is what playoff football is all about. Both teams just going back and forth, back and forth. And the action that, you, that you're looking for, both teams, that offensive line yeah, taking let's, control. Yeah, just look at this again. It is so tough. And Cold conditions, you know, and and right there. As Cusillo said, yeah, Cusillo he, was looking for the, looking yeah, for the hole. Yeah, Cusillo thought he had something there. But that, again, goes to show you, you're a big man, and you have the ability, you have the agility out there. Open field, it's hard to make an open field tackle in any condition. But when you're getting beaten down defensively, and this is our, this is both teams. Defensively, these teams have to work so hard. When you're then required to bring a big man down in the open field, good luck, and I will see you in the trainer's room in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> these days, we would be we be we would be spending a lot more time in the in the trainer's rooms these days, double A. But and I think these players will. And, and these players have worked so hard every play. They have worked so hard. And, again, we mentioned the line, but you got skill players. Skill players out in the open field, they're blocking as hard as they can to make these big rushing plays happen. So Cardinal will kick off. You know that one of these two defenses is going to have to step up to make a big play in this game to finish out the story. Jacob Stewart on the return, short kickoff, got a head of steam, pushes close to the 40, he'll be down at the 39 yard line, so good starting field position. Right now the next opportunity defensively is on Cardinal. What will it take to get that key play, that stop on Heights to try to get their offense back out for a chance to tie it up? Mental discipline again defensively. You know, every player knows you know, when you're facing this offense, there is a player that you're assigned to. You're assigned to a position, and it's your responsibility to stop. And you just got to lock in and do it and communicate. Jacob Zach on the carry. Good job by that front stop after a gain of one, second and nine for Heights. Yeah, good read there by uh, Ripley there in the front line. And, you know, his size he's able to on that outside linebacker defensive end position slip right in and make the play that's again but that's his assignment his assignment 
is, is right there, always on the quarterback. Second down and nine from their own 41. Red Wolves, Dizik, hands, Jacob Zek. Another good stop. Gain of two that time. Maybe only a gain of one as both officials from either side spot help spot the football. So a third and long now for Heights, which we haven't seen much in this ball game. And in this drive so far, defensively, he was trying to look for that stop. Cardinal is in sync. And that's just, again, locking in, following the assignments. And then you can start to sense there's a little bit of belief that they know if they make the stop right here, they have an opportunity to get back on offense. Dizik will pitch to Stewart. Trying to get around the edge. He'll be driven out of bounds. That is Josh Soltis setting the edge. And no gain on the play. Trying to get the misdirection. And Cardinal staying in their lanes. Soltis, another one of those guys playing both ways. Been a workhorse on offense, but also having to keep the energy up on the defensive side and comes up with a big play. And alertness too, you know, just again, maintaining your responsibilities. He did that even as the play was going and made the big play. So we've seen this punt formation before and Dizik will do the punting duties. I think good to see. Christian Gotta get out of there. Kyle, Christian Cowell back on the field. He was down earlier, so good to see him back out there. Back there on the punt, gets away from it. And it'll just be down at the 23-yard line. So we just talked about it. A def one of the, these two defenses are going to have to step up. Cardinal just did. They got their offense right back on the field. And, yeah, just getting locked in there, Kevin. And, but that's what it takes. Like right now. Both of these teams, playoff situation. Now it's a matter of, okay, there are no more new plays. It's who's going to be able to maintain their responsibilities, their assignments. And that's where this game's going to come down to. 8.37 to go in the ball game. Cardinal trailing 28-20. to Two Cuyahoga Heights. Josh Soltis lowers the boom. And stays on his feet out across the 30, out to the 31. Good gain on first down. And I believe, too, on the previous possession, that might have been either the first or second three and out, you know, for Cuyahoga Heights all game. Yeah, so you take all of those things into account. There's momentum now, and, and that matters in playoff football. Now Cuyahoga Heights has to dig down deep because now – their face of adversity at this critical moment. Second down and two at their own 31. Strever in the shotgun by himself and then flags fly. Oh, like someone may have lined up or jumped off sides for heights. So that gives, without even having to run a play, Cardinal a first down. And that's where the drive will kind of kickstart. And they're ready to go right away, st sticking with the play calls they had. Referees signal for the clock to continue. Strever in the backfield. Soltis across the formation this time. Strever going to the right. And still on his feet. Play continues out to the 40. So, again, even when he's met in that hole, it is tough to bring down Strever and Soltis. Yeah, but and I, I like the physicality defensively. You know, they're on the play. You know, it's just... Getting right to it and pretty much going from there. But I'll tell you what, what, 720 and counting left here in this fourth quarter. Going to see here now how uh, the Huskies can maintain. Strever in the shotgun, three receivers to the near side. Soltis will get the carry. He'll get met in the backfield, still fighting to try to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And he'll get dropped for a loss back to the 38 and a half yard line. Great read there by Noah Wilson defensively. And similar to what we saw on the Calgary Heights offensive drive a minute ago, getting the reads and attacking and making the play, not hesitating. We saw a little bit more hesitating in the first half. Second half, 
especially with these teams facing off each other again two, from two weeks ago. There's no hesitation. These guys know what they need to do, and they're attacking immediately. Four down territory, double A. Oh, I, uh, I absolutely, absolutely. You don't want to blow this opportunity if you're the Huskies. Strever, again in the shotgun. He'll hand to Soltis, and that goes nowhere as well. So on third down and eight, and then a flag comes in late from the far side of the field. Couple Heights defenders looking at each other. Personal foul on the Huskies. Didn't see the extracurriculars at the end of that play. Coach Perotti asking for an explanation on the far side. It looked like Heights defenders were getting in each other's faces, trying to make sure that they didn't make that mental mistake. And now Cardinal will be pushed way back. And in this situation, down will count. So fourth down, you have two timeouts, six minutes to go. Feel like you got to pump the football away here to, to hope your defense can get you the ball back one last time. Yeah, you're going to have to do it again. Not an ideal situation uh, for, for Cardinal. Although, you got to watch here because there was a lot of guys spreading off, off the field. So they start the clock, and Kyle Sinclair will be back to punt. Seth Crucia back deep. This one going to Zach Unger, who calls for the fair catch. Luckily, he didn't start running with that football. Is that going to be a penalty after you uh, raise that hand for the fair catch? But good field position here. And I'm sure Heights, that offensive line got a talking to. You had most of the momentum all of this second half. You had the push. Here's the time to run that, what they what they call the four-minute offense. I know there's 5.45 to go, but that four-minute offense that this type of offense is, is built for, to run out the clock, maybe put that extra score towards the end, but leaving Cardinal with very little time to try to get back in. Well, you run, you run it effectively. You're going to the next round. I mean, that's where you're at right now. So Devin Dizek, first down and 10 in his own 44. He will hand to Andy Jacobzak, who gets dropped. So that defensive front making some plays here. But also, Heights trying to eat up the clock. A gain of one on first and 10, so a second down and nine. And, and you know, the right move at this point. And look, I know uh, the Red Wolf side of things, these. They, in the first quarter, they were gaining eight, nine yards <laughs> carry on these things. So, but if they can effectively run down the clock, you still eat things up. Dizek on the pitch to Stewart, or Kusia, excuse me, gets across midfield. And it'll bring up a third and medium. Third and three coming up, 4.50 to go. Great play call on the Cowhawk Heights side of things to get six yards and again staying true to who they are because it would have been very easy for them to just say you know what all right we'll go to our pass formation and kind of go over the top here or do something out of it but staying true to who they are they're going to keep being creative and again you're, they're telling cardinal you need to stop it jacob zach in the backfield behind dizek under center Jacob, Jacob Zach will get it. He keep, continues to push and just shy of a first down. Got out of one tackle where he'd be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Found a way to get two yards out of that. And it'll be a fourth and one. Again, you're in this, you're getting into that no man's land. Fourth and one, you have the power run game. You're trying to go to the next round. I feel like Coach Martin's going to try to seal this one away. Oh, they're motivated. They're motivated to do it here, but this is a, I would say, fourth, a long one to do it. This is the time where this defense needs to be as disciplined as they have been all game. 
Also, they might try to draw him off sides. As then a timeout is called. Good job by that Cardinal defense to stay in position, not going for the hard count. So Heights will take their first time out of the half, and they will be left with two along with Cardinal. They have two on their side as well. 3.28 to go, double A playoff. Moving on, that next spot when you get into the final eight in your region, that spot is on the line here, and this is exactly what you're looking for in playoff Kevin. football. Kevin, you think I would be crazy if I said out of this timeout, they'll still go for it? I would not say I, that you're it, crazy. That, that they will still go for it. They'll still, uh, Kyle Hogan Heights will still go for it. They'll look for Cardinal to jump, steal, because you think you got out of it. Like, Cardinal forced Kyle Hogan Heights to call a timeout. You think, okay, cool, we're out of it. No, it's still fourth and one. Uh, Rico and I had a game earlier in the year where this exact scenario took place where the defense held, offense called timeout, and they came back out and went for it on fourth down. The defense jumped. So Dizek in their version of punt formation is fourth and one. And now bad snap through his hands. He's got to get it away. Punt is blocked. Scooped up inside the 20. It is only Cardinal in the, the end zone. A bad snap, then a block of the punt, scoop and score for Cardinal on special teams. Reese Soltis. It is a family affair out here for the Cardinal Huskies as they climb back in down two, 3.16 to go, 28-26. Absolutely incredible, incredible. And again, just lock it down the fundamentals. And again, when you're trying to, figure something out and what to do with the football. I know it's not ideal just to fall down, but that you didn't you didn't want that to happen. And that's a live ball and Cardinal knew that the whole way and took full advantage. You got a got a big two point conversion coming up here. So Logan Strever brings the offense out on this two point try. Final instructions given. Shotgun formation. Josh Soltis on his right hip. Strever rolls to his right, looking in the end zone. Will throw in and out of the hands of his intended target. May have had some space to run to push to that pylon. Strever saw his receiver open and was not able to connect, so we stay a two-point game. Heights maintains a 28-26 lead. Yeah, let's take a look back here at the, the punt once again. And you think here in this situation, like the punt returner, like he's trying to get ready for it, but no, it's just scoop. And Kevin, you was right on it. The initial scoop, we didn't wondering if he was gonna fall on it, but Ball just bounced in the correct way, and he got the touchdown off of that. Had a usher of blockers in front of him. Couldn't find those words during the play call, but hey, you know, the words come to you at some point. So, Well, uh, you just you just think, what was it, years ago, the Michigan State of Michigan, you know, in that situation, and, and you know, it's just all you have to do is just get the punt. It, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Simple things are not easy in any game, especially in the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> most coaches would want you just, just to secure that football, but to be able to secure the football, have those, have those teammates in front of you, and it was just Cardinal Huskies on their way to the end zone. About seven Huskies went in, but a failed two-point try still has Hus the Huskies trailing. And now looking to maybe try to get the onside kick as it continues to roll. And the hands team for Heights collects at midfield. Well done by Nick Ambrust at midfield. They try to, that little kind of squib, right, drag it across the ground as the kicker follows it, hoping to pick it up right at the 10-yard mark. 
But the hands team up to task for Heights. And now 3.15 to go. Two timeouts for Cardinal to try to get the ball back. Two timeouts for Heights as well. Looking to seal this one away and seal their trip to the next round of the playoffs. Division 6, Region 21. This is what it's all about. Devin Dizek goes under center. First and 10 at midfield. Jacob Zach behind him. They'll hand off to Seth Crucia, who breaks free and gets a first down over the 40, down to the 38, 37 yard line. And you figure like, okay, at some point, at some point, Kyle Hogan Heist was gonna break through again. It's been a little while and they finally did in that in a new set of downs and now you start to wonder when the timeouts are gonna start flying here under three minutes. So another first and 10 for Heights. The Cardinal 37 yard line, same formation. Dizek tucks under center. Stewart goes in motion, they'll pitch out to the far side. He's got some space. Over the 30, he gets out of bounds. And this time the referees wave to stop the clock. 2.36, any first and 10. So two big play calls from coach Al Martin. Well executed by Heights. Has him deep in Cardinal territory. And, and getting the football back to Jacob Storr. Give, give him the football once again. And the speed that he's able to provide on that outside, if somebody's not there at all times, then that's a big play that's gonna be given up. First and 10, Husky 26, now four heights. Dizek in the shotgun all by himself. Delayed snap, and he's got space, trying to get around a couple defenders, and they'll stop him down at the 21. Coach Parati will call a timeout. Yeah, good time, uh, obviously for clock purposes, but also good timing to get the defense uh, reset if they follow through with it. I don't know if the I don't know if the time I was actually called. The clock has continued to run here. I thought they had said it. I thought they had shown that they had called for timeout, but we continue to play on. Dizek under center. He'll wait as the play clock is motioned by the back judge. Jacob Zach on the carry and pushes for a first down inside the 15 at the 14 yard line. Just another first down there and just, you know, again, Defensively, he's just going through. And we tick under two minutes to go. Cardinal still has those two timeouts. Heights will use as much of the play clock as they absolutely can before they snap this football. Power formation as we saw earlier in the game. Jacob Zach behind his quarterback. Zolads off to his left. Again. Dizek doing a good job of keeping an eye on that back judge for the play clock signal. And now Heights will call a timeout. Their second called timeout of the half. They will be left with one. Want to, of course, take one, one final opportunity to thank the Ohio Center for Oil Facial and Implant Surgery for helping us bring CBC TV game of the week in the playoffs here. First round, Division Six, Region 21. They are the title sponsor, of course, of CBC TV. Their practice will diagnose and treat your facial pain and injuries. Also offer you a full range of dental implants and bone grafting procedures. Look no further than the Ohio Center for Oral Facial Implant Surgery for all your oral and cosmetic surgery needs. Visit their website at www.ohsurgery.com. That is www.ohsurgery.com. And if you're interested in getting involved in sponsoring CBC TV as well, head over to chagrinvalleyconference.com. Or if you're watching on chagrinvalleyconference.com, once this game is done, go ahead and search the website and get more details on how you can get involved. So coming out of this timeout, first and 10 heights, a minute 21, with the ball leading by two, trying to seal their trip. 
to the second round of the Division VI Region 21 playoffs. Cardinal looking for a stop, maybe trying to look for a turnover as well to have one more shot at it. And again, I think it's critical. It's first to 10, not first to go yet, still at the 14-yard line. Dizek gives to Jacob Zek, just dives down. And timeout will be called now by Coach Parati and the Cardinal Huskies. So an interesting point here. We've got, what, 70, 75 seconds in regulation here. And, again, just to think of how we got to this point and how this game is closed up. But the identity of this Cuyahoga Heights offense from, you know, this is what they do. <laughs> this is what they do. Just running the football. And the thing is, even if you crack the code, against this offense, you got to do it again. You got to do it again. <laughs> and, that's, and that's where it gets tough in a fourth quarter, four quarter game. It really is. They say like the game of chess is so hard to play because not because you can make the right move, you know, the initial rounds, but it's later in the game. The endurance, keeping that in there. It's tough, but this is what you got to do with the playoffs. You want your season to continue. You have to, you, you got to make those plays when they count. And, and and I know that we said ev earlier in the broadcast that every play does matter. Fo the game of football still comes down to those one or two plays. And Cardinal trailing by two. Missed extra point as they were getting back into the football game. Proving costly as they weren't able to connect on the two-point tries, they had to go for that after the scoop and score on the blocked punt. Dizek under center, hands to Jacob Zach, driving his legs, he'll get driven backwards. Parati will call another timeout, his final timeout of the half, and it'll bring up a third down with a minute eight to go. So Heights will probably will look to keep this one in the field of play, so that clock ticks. And it, it was key here. All they need is a first down. That's it. All you, all they need is a first down. Not even a touchdown. Just a first down, and that's the difference. The six yards is the difference. And that's where right now you look at kind of what these teams are thinking here. And if you're Kyle Heights. You're saying at this moment, at this rate right now, no matter what, could hold on to the football. No matter what, hold on to the football. You give yourself a chance. You give yourself an opportunity to control the destiny of this game. Because even if you don't get the first down, if you're able to at least run the clock down again, kick the field goal, that's a field goal difference compared to a touchdown difference. The last thing you want to do if you're Kyle guys to give the football back up, like on the punt that we saw in the previous possession. <laughs> All right, both teams out of the timeout. And out comes Heights, faced with a third down and six, trying to seal the game away. Third and six at the Cardinal 10 yard line, a minute eight to go. Stay tuned after the ball game, a quick pregame wrap up with myself, Kevin Arnold, and double A Anthony Alford here on CBC TV. We got a minute eight to go. Dizek sends a man in motion, takes the snap, hands off to Jacob Zach. And he'll be shy of a first down, but Cardinal not able to stop the clock. He'll be fourth down. So roll this thing down. And Actually, I would expect, I would expect uh, Cuyahoga Heights at this point, when the time comes, they're communicating as far as the play clock. They're waiting for this thing to go down, and then they'll call time on their end, or they should on their end. And Dizek's still standing with his coach over here on the sideline. Yeah, they're telling the guys, you know, gotta get back. To gotta the stay 20, off the field. Gotta, if you're on the field, you gotta you gotta be within mm -hmm. that 25 yard line. You gotta be on the opposite mm -hmm. side of where the end zone is of the 25. 
So they will call the timeout. Clock stops with 21.6 seconds. And the thing is, and you know, a lot of places don't have the play clock like standing or saying newer stadiums mm -hmm. do, but yeah. that's the officials keep track of the play clock in every play, but it matters here. Okay, 21.6, fourth down. I'm gonna be honest. If the smart money should call it that as high school. The, the the smart thing to do would be to kick the field goal, but it doesn't hurt if they decide to go for it here. It, it actually doesn't because even if they decide, even if they decide to go for it, Cuyahoga Heights and they don't get it, they would be what 91 yards mm -hmm. away yep. from the end zone. I was just about to say the same thing. Deep in their own territory because on the change of possession it the clock would stop but you'd be uh, probably under 20 seconds in that case and a long way to go we've seen big plays of course from cardinal today but, but they've been mostly through the ground mostly through the ground any tall ask to run it on the ground and be able to score within those 20 or so seconds but Dizik brings the offense out spread formation Shotgun, fourth down and five. Looking to seal the game away, and they do! A touchdown pass, nine yards from Devin Dizik to Francis Connors. They go for it on fourth down, they go for it all, and it pays off. 34-26, Cuyahoga Heights. And they have just all but punched their ticket to round two, a heck of a game from Cardinal as well, and a heck of a call from Coach Martin to seal this one away. Now, before I put the seal to this, they got to hit the extra point. The extra point would make it a two-possession game. And based on the special teams that we've seen today, this is not a guarantee. So Noah Wilson will come on for the extra point. Kick goes up. And the there kick go. is good. There you go. <laughs> Two possession lead. They go up nine with 18.5. Francis Connors catching the touchdown pass from Devin Dizik. Like we just said, a heck of a call from Coach Martin and the Red Wolves. They smelled the next round of the playoffs. Went for it. Took it but you cannot take anything away from the Cardinal Huskies here tonight. We knew it would be a tall ass to come back two weeks later after beating Cuyahoga Heights on this same field. A motivated team and both teams, body blow after body blow in this one, especially in the second half. And Cuyahoga Heights may have just hit the final one with 18 and a half seconds to go in the game. And sometimes when you're a top-level football team, sometimes you don't get an opportunity like this. You don't get an opportunity to be challenged in the first round, in the early rounds. You don't get that chance. You know, they came in here as a sixth seed, and they were definitely challenged here today. And we'll see here, they're 18 seconds away from round number two. Noah Wilson will kick off. Into it from his own 40-yard line. End over end. Be collected at the 15. That's Troy Doman. Who's been good on kickoff returns, but better coverage that time for the special teams for the Red Wolves. And now Cardinal have to try to score 10 points in 12.2 seconds if they want to move on in Division 6, Region 21. Yeah, and again, uh, should get yeah, this holds up. What, face the winner of Valley Christian School and Trinity in the next round. And they'll face Valley Christian, who moved on past Trinity in their matchup. So the three seed here in Division Six, Region Twenty One, awaits the final result of a heck of a game in the six and eleven matchup. 
And we'll give you a score update momentarily for that game. Let's it's got 12 seconds here in this one. Soltis takes the handoff around the edge, and that'll see this one to the end. Logan Strever handing off to Soltis. Again, a heck of an effort by the Huskies, but it is not enough. The Red Wolves hold serve at home, and they move on in Region 21 of Division 6 of the Ohio High School Athletic Association State Football Playoffs, 35-26. As both teams meet at midfield, we will keep it right here for just a few moments to wrap things up. Do want to update you that Youngstown Valley Christian School awaits Cuyahoga Heights. That will be their next matchup next Friday as all games in the playoffs for both the first, both of the first two rounds here in the playoffs across all divisions, all happening on Friday night. Youngstown Valley Christian took down Trinity 53 to nothing. So it'll be Valley Christian, the three seed, against Cuyahoga Heights, the six seed. As the Red Wolves come over to their cheerleaders, their cheering section, to celebrate this one. In Double A, we have been, we've both been here before. It the bittersweet element of playoff action. No matter what sport it is, you see the emotion, the the jubilation from the Red Wolves, and then of course the heads down, which they shouldn't be, but of course you understand the pain, the everything you put into it, you get to the playoffs. To lose, to have your season come to an end, those bittersweet moments, they are, they are tough to kind of to kind of see. You, you love to see the excitement from one team, but the, um, you know, the exact opposite from the other school, nothing to hang their heads for from the Cardinal Huskies. Well, well, I'll just say this. I mean, <laughs> this football game today, incredible. This this was an incredible football game on on both sides. Took a lot a lot of twists and turns. But we saw the difference in when you talk about everything that goes on in the playoffs. You know, you go back to the first quarter. Cuyahoga Heights had two scoring drives at the beginning of the game that came off of a Muff punt attempt and an interception. They start their drives in the red zone. And, you know, you can play the best that you can. And Cardinal did. And they did everything that they possibly could. Great rebound after the loss they had last week. Uh, but this Cuyahoga Heights team is an absolute machine. And they have a clear identity. And they're in a good position where – you have to, you have to beat them at their own game. They they'll tell you what they are gonna do, and they're gonna run those option plays. You're not gonna know who's gonna get the football in any of those plays, and they will do whatever they want to do, and you have to stop it. But Kevin, to your point, there's no ideal way to end a playoff season. None. I, there, I don't care what level, you know, these kids tonight, I know, for the Huskies, I know they don't feel good right now, and it, it, it's not going to be good at this moment right now. The feeling's not going to be good right now. But you see how much they care. You see how much they support each other and helped each other out and created uh, an environment where – it is a standard for them to be in the playoffs year in and year out. And they got a bright future. This program is a bright future. And those seniors over there for the Huskies, they should be proud of what they have accomplished with this program, having to go through with COVID and all that stuff. And they bounced back here for a full season. And they did their thing. So credit to Cardinal, but congratulations to Cuyahoga Heights. They did their thing to – Move on to round number two, and they had to survive. <laughs> Two-point game at the end of the game. They had to do what they had to do to survive. And, and I know on everybody's screens that you, you can see the you can you can see this, the final score there. 
Um, but both teams in their final final talk from, from their coaches, of course, Cuyahoga Heights getting, getting a talk about what this one means and, you know, what they're going to need to do tonight to, to recover and because they get to continue. They get to, they get to come back to practice. They get to go through another film session. Um, and then for Cardinal, of course, you know, their, their final talk of, of the season. But Coach Parati for Cardinal, Coach Martin for, for Cuyahoga Heights, both programs in great hands. A great football game here tonight. After that first quarter, Cardinal going down 14 to nothing. You know, bad snap on a punt, an interception. Heights gets two short fields, capitalize on them. It could have been very easy for the momentum to just stay with the home team, to stay on the Red Wolves sideline. Credit to the mental toughness and the, the coaching staff for Cardinal having those players in it, the players staying in it, fighting to the end. Come all the way back. You get within within two. Just were not able to get that two point conversion. And then Heights goes down a nine yard touchdown pass to seal it from Devin Dizik, the sophomore quarterback, to Francis Connors, the junior tight end, and got the extra point. Went up two scores. And that's how we got to this 36 or 35 to 26 win for Cuyahoga Heights. Andy Jacobzak, who will be uh, interviewed by, I'm sure, the other media outlets that are here with four touchdowns on Incredible. the game. An absolute Incredible. beast. Um, and but then, he'll, be, he'll be seeing the trainers uh, tonight and tomorrow morning with all the physical work he had to do tonight. His jersey is the only one on a, on a turf field that looks like it got – dirty here tonight like there was at regular grass here uh, as he was all over the place and uh, taking care of business helping heights move on in the playoffs so that's gonna wrap it up for us here this evening there stay tuned at cbc underscore athletics and Green valley conference.com for updates on where we might be headed next week but that's going to wrap it up here from Cuyahoga Heights. They win 35 to 26. Got to thank our CBC TV crew here tonight as we had many Ohio Media School alumni here with us here tonight, but I got to thank our camera operators and behind the scenes crew and Jason Young, Amara Jester, and Rico McGee, our production directors, Jim Wagner and Peter Tellup. Thank you so much for all the work that you guys do. Double A was so good. Good to be back with you, and hopefully oh, we get to be back. We yeah. get another one here coming up next week. So for Double A, I am Kevin Arnold. Thank you so much, everyone tuning in. Your final score here tonight: Cuyahoga Heights 35, Cardinal Huskies 26. On your CBC TV Game of the Week Playoff Edition, presented by the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. We'll see you next time right here on CBC TV. Have a great night, everybody.